Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Back with some more vibe for all you. Yes, I, you know what I mean? And this one is uh, part four of Alexander the Great. So we're going to be checking out Alexander the Great, part four. Go ahead and like this video and uh, share it and comment. Keep the comments coming. The comments are cool. Keep suggesting stuff you want me to watch. You know, this is the last part of the Believe in the, in the series about Alexander the Great, but I'm working on some other series, so you know what I mean, and thing, check that out, check it out, you know what I mean, but I ain't gonna keep you all too long, that's YouTube and Sim Simma. <laughs> of just 22, Alexander, ruler of the small Greek kingdom of Macedonia, had led an invasion of the vast Persian Empire. After a string of victories, he smashed Persian military power at the Battle of Gaugamela and took the Persian throne for himself. Now, in 330 BC, Alexander continued his march east. His goal, to find and kill Bessus, a Persian usurper claiming to be the rightful king, and to subjugate the empire's eastern provinces. My man is solidifying now. Alexander headed first for Arya, today part of Afghanistan where the Persian governor Satibarzanes had launched a revolt after initially pretending to submit to Alexander. The rebellion was crushed and Satibarzanes killed in single combat by a Greek cavalry officer. Nearby, Alexander founded the city of Alexandria Ariana, modern Herat, one of around a dozen cities that Alexander would eventually found almost all bearing his name. Alexander marched on to Frada. The Macedonian court had a long tradition of plots and assassination. Six years before, Alexander's own father, King Philip, had been murdered by his bodyguard. He was now informed that Philotas, commander of his companion, Cap it seems like there's a lot of that back then, you know, you have your 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 the higher echelon of uh, military guys in some cases, or even your senators, they will kill you so they could get power. You know, that doesn't happen as much now, per se. That's kind of sort of what happened in my country, where the deputy prime minister led a, a, a revolt and killed the prime minister at the time, and they used to be friends. But... Uh, it seems like in ancient times, people are out there just killing leaders, man. That's just crazy. Cavalry had uncovered a plot to assassinate Alexander, but kept it secret. Philotas and his father, Parmenion, were among the most respected of Alexander's commanders and had played crucial roles in all his great victories. But when Philotas confessed, under torture. Alexander had him executed, then sent assassins back to Ecbatana, where Parmenion was governor, to kill him before he even heard of his son's death and had a chance to turn against Alexander. The wiping In 329, old families. Alexander resumed his pursuit of Bessus. En route, he founded the city of Alexandria Aracosia, modern Kandahar in southern Afghanistan. As he reached Kunduz, Bessus was betrayed by his own men and handed over in chains. Wow. Alexander sent him back to Persia for execution as a king slayer. Alexander pushed on into modern Tajikistan, where the Sogdians rose up against him. He had to fight off attacks by local tribes and take several towns by assault. He's just crushing. On the banks of the Jaxartes River, he founded the city of Alexandria Escate, meaning Alexandria the Furthest. So named because he had, at last, 
reached the limit of the Persian Empire. This frontier was frequently raided by nomads, known to the Greeks as Scythians. Alexander lured them into a decisive battle near the Chaxartes. The result was a crushing victory for the Macedonian king that put an end to the raids. But fighting against Bactrian and Sogdian tribes continued, frustrating Alexander and tying him down in a difficult guerrilla war. Guerrilla war. By now, many of the Macedonian troops were unhappy with Alexander. Most had not seen their homes in years, but their king seemed bent on conquest without end. What was worse, he'd begun to adopt the rituals and dress of their defeated Persian enemy, customs they viewed as effeminate and decadent. At Marakanda, modern Samarkand, after a furious drunken argument, Alexander killed Clytus the Black. Clytus had been one of Alexander's best generals, and the man who'd saved his life at the Battle of the Granicus. Wow. Alexander was full of remorse, but his growing arrogance was alienating more and more old comrades. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Performed the traditional Persian ritual of proskinesis, prostrating themselves before the king. He crossed a line. To Greeks, this was blasphemy. Only a god was worthy of such respect, and Alexander was forced to back down. Wow, he tried to be God. In Bactria, another plot to assassinate Alexander was uncovered. This time, the ringleader was a royal page, one of the sons of Macedonian nobility who attended the king. Hermolaus had become murderously bitter towards Alexander over a perceived injustice. He and his accomplices were tortured and then stoned to death. Wow. Calisthenes. That's a horrible way to die. To be stoned to death, that means you're standing there and people are throwing rocks at you and you die slowly. And you know there's some people in that crowd that are just taking the time, hitting you in spots where they know it's going to hurt, not kill you, just to see you squirm and suffer. Alexander's official historian was also implicated in the conspiracy. He was thrown in prison, where he later died. That summer, in 327, according to legend, Alexander became captivated by the beauty of Roxana, daughter of a Bactrian lord. Their marriage was also a sound political move, helping to end local revolt against his rule, and allowing him to continue his advance into modern Pakistan, Pakistan and, India. and India. Wow. My man wanted all. Alexander now prepared to subdue the Persian Empire's most eastern provinces, which had yet to recognize his kingship. To do so, he would first have to cross the Hindu Kush mountains and reach the Indus River Valley. Advancing in two columns, his army won a series of skirmishes against the Aspasi and Asakani as they fought their way into what's now the Swat Valley of northern Pakistan. After a fierce siege, Alexander took the Asakanian capital of Masaga. According to legend, it was ruled by a beautiful queen, Cleophis, who bore Alexander a son and was allowed to keep her throne. 
Prime Man is just the ruler of Taxila, having its fun on the wrong way. Islamabad <laughs> that formed an alliance with Alexander. Together, they marched to face Porus, king of Paravas, at the Battle of the Hydaspes. It was Alexander's costliest battle, as Porus's war elephants inflicted terrible casualties amongst the Greeks. But despite Porus's fearless leadership, the battle ended in a decisive victory for Alexander, winning him control of the Punjab. He's in the Punjab. Alexander wanted to push on into India to reach the Great River, which ancient Greek geographers said formed the edge of the world. But at the River Hyphasis, known today as the Bias, his army mutinied. Oh, wow. His men had marched thousands of miles, fought countless battles, and not seen their homes in eight years. They'd heard rumors of gigantic armies waiting for them in India. They refused to go any further. The white man could have conquered furious, everything. But had to turn the army around. He followed the rivers of the Punjab to the sea, a journey that took 10 months. On the way, he defeated the Malians, but while leading the assault on their capital, was wounded in the chest and nearly killed. <laughs> on reaching the coast, part of the army under Nearchus boarded ships and returned to Persia by sea, sailing through the Straits of Hormuz and entering the Persian Gulf. was one of the great ancient voyages of exploration, as these waters had been previously unknown to Greeks. Meanwhile, Alexander led the rest of the army back by land through the Gedrosian Desert, today in southern Pakistan. But extreme heat and shortages of food and water led to terrible suffering and many deaths among his army. On his return to Persia, Alexander executed several of his viceroys and governors. Wow. Men accused of ruling unjustly and robbing temples and tombs during his long absence in the east. Can't be everywhere. He arranged a magnificent mass marriage of Macedonian officers to 80 Persian noblewomen to strengthen bonds between his two kingdoms. Alexander himself married two Persian princesses. He also paid all his soldiers' debts and ordered 30,000 youths from across the empire to be trained in the Macedonian art of war. My man is planning ahead. But at Opis, his Macedonian troops mutinied. They were offended by Alexander's apparent preference for Persian advisors and Persian ways. Alexander had the ringleaders executed and made a speech to the men reminding them of the glories they'd won together and leading eventually to an emotional reconciliation. Apparently he's a good At orator Ekatana, too. Alexander's closest and most trusted friend, Hephaestion, died of fever. The king was grief-stricken, went days without eating, and ordered a period of public mourning across the empire. Alexander waged a successful campaign against the mountain raiders of Kossia, who not even the Persian kings had been able to subdue. Returning to Babylon, he was met by embassies from distant peoples, come to recognize his greatness. Ethiopians, Libyans, European Scythians, Lucanians, Etruscans, Gauls, and Iberians. Alexander's Bactrian wife, Roxana, was now pregnant. But as he planned his next campaign, 
to Arabia and beyond. He developed a sudden fever and died days later. Wow. Aged just 32. Just 32. I wonder what the world would have been like if he saw that. death has never been established. It may have been malaria, cholera, typhus, or poison. So that's kind of like uh, the JFK uh, shooting. Who did it? Did he really do it? Did the CIA do it? Did the mob do it? You know, how did he really die? You know, it seems like with uh, with famous people, there's uh, you know, unless it's a straightforward thing, there's always questions and conspiracy theories. More so with him because he was a conqueror, not so much of a of a celebrity, but he was more you know he's a conqueror. So of course you know with all the enemies, regardless of how he died, there probably would be some kind of a conspiracy theory. Alexander died undefeated in battle. His reputation as a brilliant, fearless, and daring military commander remains undimmed. His decade-long campaign created one of the largest empires ever known, stretching from Greece to Pakistan. But it was vast and unstable, held together only by his own brilliance and name. Alexander left no plans for his succession, and his generals soon began fighting among themselves they to want carve that out big their land. own empires. In the wars of the successors, Alexander's widow Roxana and his young son were murdered. Wow. His own gold sarcophagus, en route to Macedonia for burial, was hijacked and ended up in Alexandria in Egypt. Today, its location remains one of the world's great unsolved mysteries. Few men have ever had such an impact on the course of history as Alexander the Great. The breathtaking achievements of his short life ushered in the Hellenistic Age, as Greek ideas spread across the territory of his former empire, fusing with local traditions to trigger new developments in art, science, government and language. Some of the successor kingdoms to his great empire were short-lived, others endured for centuries. But all, in turn, would fall to new forces. And in the west, to the rising power of Rome. Ah, oh, Rome came after the Greek. I'm gonna have to watch a Rome series too. Research. This guy was something else, man. So young uh, and conquered so much, so much land. You know, ruling all that land, dealing with people trying to kill him. I don't want to live like that, you know, I just want to live in peace and take it over to me. But anyway, thank you all for watching this with me. Hope you guys enjoyed this series. Keep watching because there's a, I'm, I'm watching some other series, so keep watching. Also, yeah, keep watching my, my you know, just click on the uh, box, it's either there or there. And go watch the, uh, the, go to the playlist and check out all the stuff I have. I have all the Alexander parts in there. I have a couple of... Uh, the bronze age collapse in there and uh von bismarck i got him in there too but they're coming up they're coming up so keep watching go back and check out the ones that are already gone so then you're, you're all caught up with what's to come all right y'all take care of each other all right cool runnings